Hi everyone, it's another Objectivity. I've got the white gloves. Keith has the sort of greeny blue gloves. Yep. But as we say in the industry, it's not the colour of the gloves, it's the quality of the objects. We've got a great object for you uh, and um, some background material as well, which is rather fascinating. And it's to do with what you do, uh, film and sound. I hope these people do it better than I do it. But luckily James is doing it today, so we're Indeed. all right. So talk us through it. Where are we going to start? Let's, let's, let's jump straight in. Well, well let's, let's jump straight into to this file, uh, which is um, part of an archive of Alexander Rankin's. Okay. Now, he's a, a British physicist. So uh, in 1916, what he's interested in particularly is uh, using light to transmit sound using searchlights. So what they were doing was they were concentrating light on a, on a mirror. Uh, and when you spoke, the mirror trembled. The beam would shine through uh, a slit like this uh, and would be modulated. So he's doing his experiments with this in 1916. By the way, everyone, just so you know, this, you know, this looks like a really sort of posh thing that has been made here, like a scientific experiment. But on the back, it's he, a postcard. He's just used a postcard. He's he, literally doing yeah. science on the back of a postcard. Absolutely right, yeah. So what next? The movies. Uh, silent movies, of course, but what Rankin and other people were interested in was applying this technology to film to get sound on film. So have a look at this image. What we have here is a single still image uh, from a movie, presumably, because you can see the sprocket holes on either side. But you can also see a soundtrack. Down this left-hand side, you can see the, those little uh, uh, filtered bits of light, which could be read and translated into sound. I'd love to know what this movie is. We've no idea. All right, if anyone recognises <laughs> that still from a movie, let, yeah. let Keith know. So presumably, as the light is going through the celluloid to project the picture, the light is also going through this thing here. And being picked up by the sound equipment, yes. But the Americans were way ahead of the Brits in this, of course, <sighs> uh, and therefore we have a, a really nice object for you. Everyone gets so excited whenever you open a box, Keith, because they know something special's coming. If you love the movies, this is really special. Thalified cell? Is that how I say it? Yeah, it's, it's thallium sulfide. Theodore Case produced these things, and his technology was really groundbreaking. So basically, as our light goes through that bit of celluloid with the mm. soundtrack, the light now is kind of carrying in coded form the sound, and this is the object that will then read the code from the light and turn it into the voice or the violin or whatever. It's part of the equipment that they use, yes. Okay. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than that, but yes. Case produced films himself, little shorts, including one great one that features a singing duck. Check it out on YouTube. Okay. Uh, singing duck on YouTube, you've sold me. I know, it's great stuff. But he sold his technology to Fox Studios, Fox Pictures, uh, and it became movie tone. The early Fox films had sound from 1926, 27, and uh, they produced some, some great movies over that period, uh, particularly one called Sunrise by F.W. Murnau. Great cinematography, but finally, finally, they had music and sound effects to go with their movie. Is this a bit of a personal of interest of yours? Yeah, yeah, You've I, got a bit of a twinkle in your eye. I, I love Murnau's movies. And okay. he, he really was very good at applying new technology to film. So this is a bit of science that ended up in a place where we can all enjoy it. Enough talking. Okay. More yeah. object. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get this out. It's in its original packing from 1926. This is exactly factory fresh. I'm a little bit nervous here. Well, I'm always slightly nervous when I'm handling glass. Wow. Can I hold this? You can. So it kind of looks like a light bulb. Mm. It says AO Light or EO Light, Case Research Laboratory Incorporated, Auburn, New York. Patent applied for 948. What am I holding here? What, what does this do? It's a photoelectric cell. So uh, it's light sensitive and it can translate light into electrical impulses, if you like. So it can be read and attached to a speaker and one can retrieve sound using uh, one of these things. 
It was part of Rankin's collection, so he clearly had heard about this technology, thought it was rather brilliant and he could use it. Uh, so he, he must have sent away to the case labs to order this particular thing so he could study it. So he was, he was poking around saying, what have these Americans done? How have they made this work? Mm. Oh, they're clever, those Yankees, aren't they? They are. There you go. What is this, Keith? What is this, this contraption that is strapped to the ceiling of the atrium here at the Royal Society? It is, yes. It's a bit Star Wars, isn't it? This is Ariel 1, 